Crystal Ann Compton is a spiritual teacher, intuitive channel, and founder of the Lightworkers Lab, a growing online community dedicated to spiritual learning, fellowship, and consciousness exploration. She was an intuitive reader for many years and now offers her expertise as a coach, mentor, channel, and guide. Her website is crystalandcompton.com, and you can join the Lightworkers Lab on Facebook. Please join me in welcoming Crystal Ann Compton to the show. Welcome, Crystal. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Oh, it's an honor to have you. Thank you for being here. I'd like to start out with you telling us a little bit about yourself and how you kind of got to where you are today. Sure. Well, it's kind of a long and interesting story, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, I was born and raised in Hawaii. My father was also born and raised in Hawaii, and my grandfather was a legislator in Hawaii. And so I kind of grew up in a very magical and wild place, lots of spiritual energy. And I started perceiving that energy from a very young age. In fact, my first memory was not of like my mom or my dad. It was of nature elementals and spirits and energy that I would perceive. But I kind of had an advantage because when I went to my mom or when I went to my dad and I shared my experiences, they didn't shut me down. They didn't tell me that's evil or that's wrong. Instead, they believed me and they gave me context and encouraged the interaction, just essentially steered me in the interactions. My mom was very, very psychic. My father was also incredibly psychic and connected to Hawaii and the land. However, my dad was also just like an incredible, uh, <laughs> despicable substance abuser. He was very violent and quite abusive. And so I grew up with this weird admixture of again, this intense magical energy, but at the same time, this really intense violence all around me. And as a young person, as a little girl growing into a teenager, it was quite confusing. When I became a teenager, I just needed something more. I needed the structure. And so I found myself somehow at a charismatic Pentecostal church. I was invited to some sort of a Wednesday night, whatever. And I went and what I liked about the church was that they were very charismatic. There was a lot of energy there. There was a lot of spiritual things happening and I could relate to that based on my own perceptions. But there was also that structure there and this idea that there was a father who loved me and who cared about me and who would never hurt me. And so that really resonated with me. And because of that, I kind of got sucked into organized religion for many years. I was a missionary to Fiji, a missionary to Tonga, a missionary to Samoa. I was a worship leader, a singer for Jesus. Like I, I we called it sold out and radical for Jesus back in the day. Uh, but I was in organized religion for quite some time until about my mid twenties when my father passed. And when my father passed, that just shook the foundation of absolutely everything in my life. It was a sudden passing. He was a little bit older than I am now. And, um, I went to my church essentially, and I asked my pastor who I'd been working for and helping him to build this church. And I asked him if he would take an offering on behalf of my mother because she could not afford to bury my father or pay their expenses. And I remember my pastor very clearly saying to me, well, if I did that for you, I'd have to do that for everyone else. And your dad wasn't a member here. And so I started talking to him a little bit about that. And the next thing he said, I will also never forget. He said, you know, just last week, a mother whose son is dying from AIDS, this is back in the early nineties, asked me for the same thing. And her son is a sinner. We can't take offerings for him and we can't take offerings for your dad. And it was one of those critical moments in life where everything just sort of falls away. And there's this piercing and painful clarity that takes place like whoa i've been serving and giving and working in this structure but it wasn't for the reasons that i thought i thought it was for god i thought it was for this bigger purpose but really i was just serving a system and i was just serving a man and look at this man now making a business decision about my father about me and that was the impetus for me to leave organized religion and set out on my own now a lot of the people who find me online and follow me, they come out of religion, whether that's Catholicism, Christianity, whatever kind of system. And they still have an affection somewhat for 
the teaching or for the system, but they're, they're trying to figure out how to cope with this new understanding and, and if they can still utilize some of that stuff while venturing out on their own. And I like to tell them that not all who wander are lost. You know, sometimes you have to be in the space of question and in the space of uncertainty in order to find out who you really are in relation to God. Now, for me, that took me many, many years. I'm, I'm 50 years old this year. I was about 25 when that went down. Um, I, I've only recently, <laughs> since my 40s, really come into relationship with our creator and out of reaction from religion and, and Christians. And I was quite angry for some, for some time and it's kind of come in full circle for me, just how to be a whole person and how to be a good person and how to be what I call a light worker, although that's kind of getting to be a buzzy term, but how to be of service before the right reasons and for the right thing. So I've been on a long journey only to kind of end up in a similar space, but I'm very, very, grateful for that.